Okay, a pleasant good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon to all of you. My name is Andrew, one of the pastors of Victory Taft. Welcome to our 5 p.m. service. And we are currently on the fourth part of our series titled Trustworthy. If it's your first time to join us, uh, basically in the series that we're studying for six weeks, we are studying the book of Isaiah found in the, in the Word of God, the Bible, and focusing on the aspect of God's, uh, God's faithfulness in terms of fulfilling His covenant, covenant promise to His people. Na kahit sobrang rebellious ng people niya, ng mga anak niya, to Him, still, He chose to be faithful to His unconditional promise to them. And God showing, you know, that He's faithful in fulfilling His covenant promise to His people just goes, just goes to show how trustworthy He is. Okay, sino sa niwala that our God is a trustworthy God? Amen? He's not a God who changes His mind. When God says something, we can be 100% sure that He will keep His word. In, in Isaiah chapter 1 and in week 1 of this series, para lang may konting recap tayo, we saw uh, God's faithfulness to His people and he, give, he gave an issue of repentance to them. Naalala nyo in Isaiah 1.18, kita dyan, sabi niya, come reason with me. It's an invitation from God to turn from their wicked ways. And if it, they do so, their, their sins, sabi doon, they'll, they'll, though they're like scarlet, they'll be white as snow. But as we know and understand from Israel's story, the people did not repent. The people continued in their wicked ways. Thus, ano nangyari? Impending judgment came upon the nation. But the good news is, we learned that even though judgment befell God's people, judgment will not be God's final word. In weeks two and three of this series, we learned that God gives hope in the midst of judgment and that God gives hope through judgment. God gives hope in the midst of judgment. We learned that in week two. Naalala by week two, we saw God telling Isaiah about a beautiful picture of the future that one day we will see the nations of the world stream to the mountain of the Lord. Naalala nyo ba yun? Learning His ways and walking His path. The future is always hopeful with God. Ladies and gentlemen, let me repeat and emphasize that. The future is always hopeful with God. Pag nakay God tayo, the future always looks bright. Yan. Parang ano yun, tagline ng isang organization. Thus, even though we feel judgment, especially because we, trans, we have made a transgression against God, always remember, na eto, we learned this last week, that God gives hope through judgment as well. That God's judgment is an instrument to humble His people and remind them that we shouldn't exalt ourselves and only God alone should be exalted. So that's a quick recap for the past three weeks that we've been studying the book of Isaiah in this series. Naalala niyo ba week three? Kaya mag-ingat tayo sa mga idols. Yan. So yung pag tinatawag kayong idol, matakot na kayo kasi babasagin kayo ng joke lang. Okay? Pero pili tayo, humility or humiliation. Let's choose the path of humility instead of humiliation. Today, in the fourth part, fourth part na po tayo of this series, we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Here, our focus is going to be about um, the nature naman and the character of God so that hopefully we will have a better appreciation of His, of the nature of His covenant. Kasi yung, yung covenant ni God springs forth from His nature. Matututunan natin. Bakit ba ganito yung covenant ni God? Why is it like this? Why did He design the covenant like this? It's because um, of His holy nature. More on that later. And why does He continue to be faithful to His promise to His people? Kahit stubborn na yung mga tao. Makikita mo rin another attribute of God that is just so wonderful. So today, in week four of this series, we'll focus more on God, about the nature of and, and character of God. So medyo magiging up, and, up close and personal tayo. Kasi, um, and I hope that tayo rin, all of us listening to this message online, we will have a very deep and personal encounter with Him in this message. That's my prayer through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yung, yung focus kasi ng message natin, it's gonna be Isaiah's personal encounter and experience with God. Today, our text shows us what is one of the ways, if not one of the best ways, people in Scripture have been radically 
transform. It's about transformation. And ito, I think for many of us Christians, sino sa inyo Christiano, you're proud of it? Come on now, comment in the comment section if you're a Christian, you are proud of it. I think most of, our, of, mo, most of the people that attend our service are Christians. I think one of the biggest questions uh, that Christians have in their Christian walk is this. Transformation in general. Questions like this come to our mind. Tama ba? Nakaka-relate ba dito? Lord, how can I change? Paano ba talaga ako magbabago in this life? How do I change? How can I grow in you more? I want to transform God, but how? Sino sa inyo, ano, you've asked those questions in your life uh, at least one point as in your Christian walk, okay? Nakaka-relate, I think, tayo lahat dyan. And we've cried that out to God, especially if you're a Christian, you've been born again, you've had a revelation of the goodness of God in your life. But the question now is, Lord, paano pa talaga nagbabago? How do I really change? And how can I change? Right? In, in Isaiah chapter 6, we see how Isaiah was radically transformed and changed by God. And this is my hope and my prayer, that the Holy Spirit will use this text to give us a better revelation of who God is. And thus, hopefully, it will lead to a transformed Life and I hope that will be your prayer with me as well. Sino sa inyo, that's your prayer that God will continue to transform us. Amen. Comment that in the comment section if that is your prayer for God to continually transform all of us. So, in the past three weeks, our text focused on God and His relationship journey to His people. The fourth week, major unique because it focuses more of a personal relationship between God and the prophet. Isaiah. We're going to zero in on one individual. So if you have your Bibles with you, kindly open them with me to Isaiah chapter 6. Okay, Isaiah chapter 6. Pastor, hang- verse what to verse what? Isaiah chapter 6 lang. Kasi pong chapter babasahin natin, okay? So if you have your Bibles read- with you, kindly open it there with me. Okay, let me read verse 1. Sabi dito, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. Verse 3, And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Verse 4, and the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Verse 6, then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am. Send me. That was Isaiah. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep on hearing but do not understand. Keep on seeing but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their eyes heavy. And blind their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without people, and the land is a desolate waste. And the Lord removes people far away, and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. And last verse, And though a tenth remain in it, it will be burned again, like a turbinth or an oak whose stump remains when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. Let's just pray. Father, thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, God, again, for the privilege and opportunity to gather even online just to hear your word. And I pray, God, that uh, the words that will be spoken and preached will touch the hearts of those who are listening, Lord God. And through this message, Father, this is my prayer, the Holy Spirit will use it to transform all of our lives, that we will have a radical encounter with you, God. We lift our time up to you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say online, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Okay, Isaiah, Isaiah 6. Sino sa nabasa? Nabasa na ang Isaiah 6. Isaiah tsaka nabasa. Sino sa nabasa na Isaiah 6? I think that's one of the more popular chapters and passages of Scripture in Isaiah, right? 
And if, you're, if you've been a Christian the longest time, I'm sure you've encountered this text one way or another already. This chapter in Binasa Natin contains what uh, Orthodox Church history calls as the Trisagion. Yan yung spelling niya. Trisagion, basahin niya na sa keynote. So try and hagios three times holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. So in this passage of Scripture, ganda nito passage of Scripture nito. Isaiah saw the Lord. And some scholars would actually say that this is probably the beginning of Isaiah's ministry. This is uh, his encounter with God, probably. Ito siguro yung sumala ng ministry niya. Now, ito, as mentioned, in week two of our series, I don't know if you remember this, from Isaiah 1 to 5, chapters 1 to 5, there's a recurring theme of judgment and hope. Diba? Judgment and hope, nagdaba back and forth yung theme of judgment and hope in the first five chapters. Mostly judgment, pero again, there's still part where we can see hope for the future, especially for God's people. So in the first few chapters, we see God's people being judged because of their sin, rebellion, idolatry. Naaral na natin to past few weeks, diba? Pero at the same time, there's this, there's this glorious picture of hope for for God's people. May, may magandang picture, may magandang uh, future promise for what they will be in the future. Isaiah 4 mentions that. I won't, hindi uh, ko na nalagay sa keynote. Pero it's a picture of the people being holy, being washed, being cleansed. So in the first five chapters, there's two pictures that was shown. What, what God's people is right now. Rebellious, idolaters, and so on and so forth. And another picture is, you hopeful, what God's people were meant to be. What's God, what God's people ought to be. A future picture of them. Right now, stubborn, rebellious, and faithful to the covenant. In the future, faithful to God's ways. So, right now, it is state nala, but it's also saying it's going to be like this one day. Question is, so how is that going to happen? Kung ganto sila ngayon, right? Tapos ganyan yung magiging sila in the future. How will that ever happen, right? Kunyari, example, si Leovic. <laughs> Random example lang. So ngayon, kunyari, um, example lang naman to, bro. I'm not saying this true. Kunyari, hindi magaling kumanta. Tapos may picture in the future, sobrang, alam mo yung pang ano, American Idol. Ay, parang outdated na example. Pero ganun. So this is who he is right now, pero this is a picture of the future. So the question is, how will that transpire? How will that happen? So these are the first five chapters. You, s- you see these two polarizing pictures, right, of God's people. How is that gonna happen? Scholar John Oswald, narinig nyo, kinukot namin ito kasi isa siya sa mga resources namin, said, says this. Ito, ito yung sagot sa tanong. Chapter 6 provides the solution. Sinful Israel right now can become servant Israel. There's a quote there. When the experience of Isaiah, yung, ma- yung aaralan natin in, in chapter 6, when the experience of Isaiah becomes the experience of the whole nation. This is what we're going to study. Uh, as Oswald continues, sabi niya, when the nation has seen itself against the backdrop of God's holiness and glory, and when the nation has received God's gracious provision for sin, then she can speak for God to a hungry world. Did you get that? So itong ano, experience Isaiah, there's a, there's a word for that. It's a microcosm of what Israel should experience as a nation para so that they can become the kind of people that God wants them to be. So Isaiah shares with his hearers or his readers his personal encounter with God. Only if God's people will have the same kind of encounter and response will they be the kind of people that God wants them to be. So let's look at Isaiah's encounter. Ito yun, chapter 6. Ladies and gentlemen, Isaiah 6 is so jam-packed and alam naman natin to that diba, man, man does not live on bread alone but in every word of that comes from the mouth of God. So every word in scripture is important. Pero there's just some scripture na, alam mo yung, one verse pa lang pwedeng isang preaching na. And, and pages after pages can be written after that. So Isaiah 6 is one of those classic 
passages of Scripture. There's really no end as to the depth of what we can mine from Isaiah chapter 6. So, uh, for all of you attending right now, I hope and pray mas ganahan kayo to go back to God's Word. Basahin nyo ulit yung Isaiah 6 and see the revelations that God will give to you as you read it. Balikan nyo siya kasi hindi natin may exhaust yan in today's message. I, I once preached a sermon on Isaiah 6 many, many years back. And the the lessons I learned when studying Isaiah 6 and my, when I heard the preaching on Isaiah 6, those lessons still uh, has still stayed with me up until today. It's really nothing short of life changing. Last time, I, I only preached up until verse 8 because there's already so much there. But today, we're going to try to cover up until verse 13. So okay, I hope you're ready for this. And again, I hope, I hope you'll study God's word even further. So, uh, two primary things that we can learn here in the first part of Isaiah, uh, up until verse 8. Two things, and na mention it na ito in passing ni John Oswald. God's holiness and God's grace. That's the two primary things we see in the first few verses. God's holiness and God's grace. So again, we're uh, in the series, we're learning about the God who established these covenants for his people. A better appreciation of his nature, his holy nature, and his grace, I believe will help us appreciate better these covenants that he made with his people. So that's the first part, God's holiness and God's grace. Then later in verse 9 to 13, we're going, to, we're going back to the covenant theme and see how people responded to Isaiah's ministry. So generally, ito yung flow ng message natin for this Afternoon. Okay, so let's look at the first part. I hope you're ready for this, as I'm so excited as well to preach this to all of us. So let's look first at the setting and the context. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. It says here, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. So, ano yung setting nitong ano? Isaiah chapter 6 that we just read. The setting of this, of this prophetic word, uh, this vision of the Lord for Isaiah, came at the time, very clear in verse 1, sabi dyan, when King Uzziah died. King Uzziah was the ruler of Judah at that time. Actually, that's, ano, that's a good way to know the timelines of the text you're reading. Yung mga, when, in the year that King Gato Ganyan died, Mas makita mo, ano, in reference to the Old Testament, where did this take place, okay? So, um, out, of, ito, out of a long list of evil kings that the kingdom of Israel and Judah had seen, alam niyo naman yung story a little bit, diba? from King Saul to King David to King Solomon, many, many other kings came from them, diba? Lalo na with the divided nation, Israel and Judah. Generally, yung mga kings that came out of them was evil, I think in Israel nga, puro evil. Eh. Sa Judah, there were some of these kings who were relatively okay and good. Uzziah was one of them. He was a relatively uh, good king. Um, he was a great king who led Judah. And how many of you nakakarilid? Pag dumating din yung mga magagaling na leader ng, ng, ano, ng mga nations, then people are usually filled and bringing, brimming with hope. Tama ba? Tama ba? Kapag, la, 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 in our nation, the Philippines is still so relevant for us today. It's so easy for us to put our hope and trust in, in a great leader. La, 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 if this leader demonstrates uh, integrity and, and competence, right? Kasi feeling natin, maayos yung ekonomiya, mababawasan yung mga problema natin, and so on and so forth. So, it, itong Isaiah 6, if you, if understanding the context, that was the year that the King Uzziah died. He was a great king. He was a great leader. So meaning, ano yung, ano, ano yung sentiment ng mga tao during that time? Medyo bumagsak yung hope nila. Kasi magaling to si Uzziah. Sino papalit sa kanya? Another evil king. Another idolatrous king. Right? So when a great leader that like that dies, then, then the hope of the people also dies with them. Kasi naturally tayo mga tao, nilalagay natin yung hope natin on a personality. And si sabi ni Isaiah dito is this, when he saw the Lord Almighty high and lifted up, sitting on a throne in the temple, what this communicates is this, that God is still in control no matter what. 
God is still in control no matter what. Our social, political, and economic situation um, right now may not seem very great in our, in our nation, right? But church, our hope and trust is that we should, we should not put our hope on a person. Pero kay God lang. I think this is a good reminder. And it, I think this is timely for all of us. Tama ba? How many of you are glad and encouraged to be reminded that God is still in control no matter what happens, right? Kasi, di ba, few weeks ago, lockdown na naman, gato na naman, may mga bagong variants, and this and that. Ito pa, yung ano latest news? Mabagal daw yung rollout ng vaccine. Naku, wala na talaga ang pag-asa tong bansang to. Pero I want you to know na whatever happens, God is still in control. And ultimately, dapat sa Kanya pa rin natin talaga yung hope and trust natin. Grabe no, setting pa lang to. Nasa setting pa lang tayo. Ang dami na natin makakuha. Nakaka-minister na to. Especially with, our, with what's happening right now. This reminds us that our God is a trustworthy God. Third, that's not all. Ano pa lang yun? Setting pa lang yun. Next, uh, what else did we see here with Isaiah here? And what can we learn about God's nature and character? So, number one, first thing we saw, after, uh, Isaiah saw after he saw God sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, is this. Number one, in verse two, you have, you have seraphims. Okay? Ano yung mga seraphim? That's, that can be seen in Isaiah 6 verse 2. Sabi dun, above him, above, above God, stood the seraphim. These are angelic creatures. Seraphim means fiery. Nasusunog sila. Yun yung description. Some people say that the reason probably na ganyan yung description dito sa angelic creatures na ito is most likely because they were in the presence of a holy God. Because they were in the presence of the holy God. Ganun yung naging effect to these perfect, sinless, angelic creatures. I think, I think dito sa text na ito natin na ano eh, nakuha yung joke na Alam niyo ba yung joke na kapag sinabi, grabe ang holy mo naman, masusunog na ako sa'yo. Tama ba? Narinig niyo na ba yun? May truth naman to that statement. And I think um, this passage of scripture echoes that. Kasi in the light of, a, of the presence of a holy, holy, holy God, then most likely this is what's gonna happen when we're in the presence of the Almighty God. Grabe no? How many of you can imagine that? In the presence of of the king seated on a throne. Tapos, ano pa yung about the seraphim? Another image we see here is that these seraphims uses their wings to cover their feet and their face because even for perfect angelic creatures like them, they dare not see and gaze upon the face of God. And as they were flying, the seraphims were crying this again. Do natin nakikita yung trisagion. Holy Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. Actually, ano eh, I remember someone taught us about this passage of Scripture. Parang ano eh, parang nagkakorus daw yung mga seraphims dyan eh. Parang one seraphim here will say, holy! And then another will echo it back, holy! And another will cry, holy! And then everyone will uh, cry and sing together, is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. And this is what they were declaring. Right? And probably, declare nila ito. Kasi ito yung first hand na experience nila with God Himself. The holiness of God. And they cannot help themselves but just cry out that chorus. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. Again, the trisagion. Three times holy. Description of God. The mention of the word holy three times tells us a lot about this attribute of God. Why is this important? This three times mentioning the word holy to describe God. Because of this. Nowhere in the Bible do you see God being described in any of his attributes three times. Diba in Hebrew literature, when you use a word twice, it means you're emphasizing something. Diba when Jesus said, truly, 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 I say to you, it means he's about to say something important. And when he called certain people in the Bible, Abraham, Abraham, Moses, Moses, it was for emphasis to get their attention. But to use a word three times, like this, holy, holy, holy. You know what that means? That indicates 
finality. God is absolutely holy. He is a holy God. As I was growing up in my Christian walk here in this church, uh, I learned that you know, if there was any one description, any one description, uh, that is something like you know, parang pinnacle attribute or the best description of of who God is, and it, it isn't love. Although we know God is love, right? and we love that about God, because God is love, sabi naman sa John, and we so appreciate His love. Pero if there was one attribute that really sets God apart, and one attribute that really, really defines and describes Him, and that is that word, holy. Because nowhere, nowhere else was God described three times except this word, holy. The very essence of God is His holiness. He is a God like no other. Now for many people, pag sinabi mong holy, ang pumapasok ka agad sa isip natin, again, just like the joke earlier, is masusunog tayo, right? Or when you see, when you see some, someone doing something very good, very Christ-like, May mga ganun ba kayong kaibigan? Yan. Turo nyo nga sa mga ano. Di ba, pag nasa church tayo, tuturo natin. Ito, grabe, sobrang bait na to. Yan. Siguro si EJ. May mga ganun kaibigan ba kayo? Very Christ-like. Yung wow, grabe yung kabaitan. Yung, yung tipong kunyari, ano, sasabihin mo after ng service, sara, gimmick tayo, kain tayo. Uh, tapos sasabi nila, hindi, kayo na lang kasi magkakuhay time pa ako. Wow, grabe. Holy, sobrang holy. Kasi ano, di ba? Sobrang ano naman yan. Banal, di ba? Yun yung joke natin. You know, ito, as funny as that, that sounds, I think it gives us some sort of a picture of what of that word holiness. It gives us some sort of a picture, although we joke about it. Eh. Tama ba? Kasi the word to be holy means to be set apart. And that describes who God is. It tells us that our God is like no other. He's totally different. He doesn't go the way fallen, sinful human beings go. And holiness indeed has something to do with being set apart from sin. Yon. God is pure, holy, and the definition of moral goodness. There's no absolutely no defilement in God. Kaya nga yung sinabi natin na ano, kapag holy isang tao, tapos feeling mo masunog ka when you're in, this, in, their, in their presence. Yan. That's the kind of effect that the concept of holiness has. Parang gato yan. Uh, let me just give you another illustration. Imagine a white shirt. Yan, kita yan sa screen. White, di ba? Ayos ba? <laughs> or gulat ka, no? <laughs> Ayos ba? <laughs> De, gulat ka, no? May commercial, di ba? Imagine a white shirt like that na kakagaling lang sa labada. Yan. Spotless, absolutely clean, white as snow. If you, f- if you spill some blank, uh, some, some red ink over that white shirt like this, you know, you know there's something off, di ba? There's something off with that. Nawala na yung perfection niya. Parang, eh, sayang. Kasi, it's, that red ink is seen now in the contrast of the, of the ano, purity of the entire white shirt. Now, actually, for this image, obvious na obvious kasi alaki ng stain. Diba? But, but because the shirt is so white, kahit ito, kahit maliit lang yung stain, like this, diba? maliit lang yung stain, no? Kitang-kita pa rin eh. Obvious na obvious pa rin siya. Pansin na pansin. Because you can see that little, very little, small stain in the backdrop of the, of the purity of that shirt. The absolute holiness and the otherness of God gives us people a very heightened awareness of our sinful nature. Na grabe sobrang makasalanan pala talaga tayo. That's, that's an aware, what an awareness of God's holiness does. Kaya nga yung joke natin na kapag may holy tayo nakilala, di ba nanliliit tayo sa kanila? Because we see Mas, na, mas parang nakikita mo yung fallen, sinful human nature na to. Grabe, sobrang holy naman na to. Woo! Parang naniliit tayo. That's, that's one effect of holiness. That's one of the things it does in our lives. ba? Yung kanina, wag na tayo gumimik kasi babasa, magbabasa na ang Bible. Diba? Grabe naman, sobrang pagkadevote na to kay Lord. That's a joke, pero I think you, you get the point. So Isaiah, in this passage of Scripture, he had a revelation. Of the holiness of God. Siguro ano eh, parang ganun si Isaiah back then. Um, he was, uh, did you know this? Isaiah was someone who was set apart from the rest of the people. Uh, Isaiah was, ano, was a relatively righteous man compared to his peers. Diba? Parang ganito yan. Parang, um, sino pa maganda example ito? Kunyari, si Lyovic. Diba? Sino-sino na-appreciate yung si Lyovic? 
grabe sobrang bait niyan. Gra- grabe yung heart niya. Grabe yung compassion niya for people. So, um, when you see him, wow, this is a righteous person. Grabe, sobrang bait niya. Maniliit ka sa kanya. Pero, and si Isaiah, parang ganun rin. Compared to his peers, there was none like him. But, for Lyovic and Isaiah, talagang kinumpare si Lyovic and Isaiah, for any person na, na relatively very, very righteous, when you stand in the presence of a holy God, then we will see our fallenness. Kasi all have fallen short the glory of God, tama ba? Pero when you see God for who He tr- truly is, then we will see ourselves for who we truly are. When we, all of us, have a revelation of the holiness of God, makikita natin yung fallen, sinful human nature natin. Kaya ito, tinan mo, in verse 5, ganun yung naging response ni Isaiah. Again, relatively mabait na tong si Isaiah compared to his peers. Ha? Pero ganito yung naging effect when he saw the Lord God, the holiness of the Lord God Almighty. Verse 5, sabi dyan, tinan mo yung naging effect. Ha? And I said, woe is me, for I am lost, I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes, my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Woe is me. Hindi to yung woe, grabe ako. Hindi. Woe, di ba? Yung word na yun, woe, it's a prophecy of judgment. He's saying this, judgment be upon me. Nakita mo yung ano eh, itong woe na to used by the prophets oftentimes. Jesus also uh, used this word, di ba? Woe to you, Chorazin, in the New Testament. It's a prophecy of judgment. You are being judged when that word is used upon you. Now, you know what? There's something very interesting in verse 5, Isaiah 6 verse 5. Kasi, prophecies of judgment, did you know this, are usually directed by prophets to other people or other nations. You know what's so unique about verse 5? This is the only time in scripture that a prophecy of woe is given by a prophet to himself. Woe kasi is always directed to other people, prophecy of judgment to nations. That's the only time in scripture. Bakit kaya? And why would a prophet prophesy judgment upon himself? Why? Because Isaiah saw the holiness of God. Ganun yung effect when we see God for who he truly is. He's saying, Grab, I know the judgment now that I deserve. Hindi ko na pwedeng masabi, I'm a relatively better person compared to my peers. Now I see that I am a man of unclean lips and I live amongst a people of unclean lips. So na-realize niya yung depravity niya tsaka yung people. Now he knows himself that he himself included has fallen far short the glory of God. Sorry, Lyovic, pero I know sobrang bait mong tao. Mabait po talaga siya. So grabe yung compassion niya. Pero bro, lahat tayo kasama dito. When we have a better understanding of the holiness of God, yan yung magiging effect and impact. That just like, I, we will have that Isaiah encounter. Grabe, woe is me. This is my sinful, fallen nature. Pag, pag mas naiintindan natin yung holiness na God kasi ano, mas maintindan natin yung totoong status ng buhay natin apart from God saving us. So ako, even up until today, um, kapag iniisip ko yung holiness na God, it haunts me, it, it traumatizes me. Diba sinabi ko kanina, grabe yung impact nitong chapter na ito sa akin. Kasi I heard a message, I heard a preaching about that. And for a season, I cannot stop but contemplate on the holiness of God. Grabe. And yung magiging effect niya sa is, you will realize our fallen human nature and our depravity. Pero in a way, in a, in a good way. Kasi it humbles us. We, it, we cannot puff ourselves up. We cannot exalt ourselves. Knowing that this is who our God is. Yon. So, ako, when I'm reminded of the holiness of God, I hope ito rin yung maging impact sa atin lahat. Uh, ma-humble tayo. Mas makikita natin yung depravity natin, yung sinfulness natin because of a deeper awareness of God's holiness. So, I, I say I realize that and he knew and understood that his people, kasama siya, all of them are doomed to judgment because of in, in the light of God's holiness. And they've all fallen short of the covenant that God established with them. Wala na excuse Kasi ito yung standard ni God. Absolute holiness. We're all doomed. Yun yung sasabi We're all doomed. Sama na ako dito. Because now my eyes have seen the Lord God Almighty. 
Kamusta tayo so far? What do you think of God's holiness? Grabe, no? Parang, kawawa naman tayo lahat dito kapag dito mag yung preaching. Okay? <laughs> Kasi it makes us more self-aware of our fallen sinful nature. Now, buti na lang. It doesn't end there. Kasi kung dyan lang tayo nag-end, all, our, all, all of our lives, siguro madadepress na tayo. Kung dun lang tayo nag-end, woe is me. <laughs> woe to me. Kasi we'll just live with that fact forever that we're a failure, we're condemned, we're a man of unclean lips, we live among a people of unclean lips. Right? Now, question. If this is God's holiness, if this is God's standard, grabe, holy, 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 with such high standards for His people, paano na tayo? We're all surely doomed to destruction because of this, because of this knowledge, because of this fact. Can there be any hope that's gonna be left for us. Again, buti na lang, it doesn't end there. Verse 6. Let's see in verse 6 what happens. Ang ganda nito. May drama to eh. I, I love when I'm reading this passage of scripture when I'm teaching about this kasi ramdam na ramdam ko yung drama at this very moment. Okay, sabi dito, then one of the seraphim flew to me having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar Kita niyo yung picture, yung mga seraphim na kita niya. It flew to Isaiah, papunta sa kanya. At this moment, diba? imagine this with me. Isaiah saw that seraphim diba? flying high above, right? And this burning angel about to come to him, right? At breakneck speed, I don't know. Tapos may hawak-hawak siyang burning coal, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. Ang dami, ang dami siguro nung tumatakbo sa isip na Isaiah at this moment. Diba? Ano yung previous verse? Kaka proclaim lang yun ng judgment. Kabi mo to me, I'm judged, I'm gonna be doomed, I'm gonna die, right? Tapos, ito na, papunta yung burning angel, fast approaching him with what? A burning coal. Tapos, di ba yung seraphim fiery na? So, yung seraphim still needed to use tongs to get a burning coal. Kung siya fiery na siya, nasusunog na siya. So, ano ibig sabihin nun? Gano ka init itong burning coal that he had to use tongs to get? Right? How hot was that coal probably? Diba? Imagine, I say here, God just signed my death sentence, okay? So, so long mga parts, mga kapwa propeta ko, Micah, sige kayo na bahala, okay? Bye, see you in judgment. But, but, verse 7, in a remarkable turn of events, verse 7 happens, and this is what happens to Isaiah. Sabi dito, And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. He deserved nothing but judgment, but he did not get judgment. What did he get instead of that? He experienced the grace of God. Imagine ba? Diba dapat, wah, ito na, death sentence. But then judgment did not come. And instead, that is what the angel said. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. So here, Isaiah experienced the grace of God. Buddha lang hindi nag-end sa holiness, no? Buddha lang gracious si God. How many of you appreciate the grace of God? Amen? Grace is something we get even if we don't deserve it. Yun yung grace. Everything from verse 1 up, up to verse 6 tells us Isaiah was headed for doom and judgment. And all of us probably. Because God is holy and He is not. And He realized the uncleanness of His lips and His falling short the glory of God. He was supposed to get judgment. Judgment is what Isaiah deserved. Judgment is what all of us sinful human beings deserve. Pero He did not get that. Instead, Isaiah got what He don't deserve. And that is the taking away of His guilt and the atonement of His sins. Because God had taken it away. So God forgives Isaiah. God cleanses him. And look, look, butin lang, it doesn't stop here. Look at what this experience of God's grace does in the life of Isaiah. Verse 8, after he experienced the grace of God, after he experienced the forgiveness of God, this is how Isaiah responded to God. Sabi sa Isaiah 6 verse 8, sabi dito, And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? After, ano, ma-forgive, ma-cleanse Isaiah, sabi ni God, Whom shall I send? 
And who will go for us? Tapos nag-response sa Isaiah. Sabi niya, Here I am. Send me. Ako na Lord. Me God. Can you imagine verse 8 with me? First and foremost, ito ah, let me ask you this question. When a- someone asks you a question, kunyari, uh, yan, EJ, kum- bro, kailangan ko ng volunteer and may papagwa kasi ako. I need to send this person somewhere. Kunyari, sinabi ko sa'yo, sa'yo yun. So what will be your first response when anybody asks a statement like you with that? Tatanong mo muna, di ba? Ano papagwa mo? Or baka hindi eh, kilala kita, EJ, adaptability ka eh. Go ka lang ko. <laughs> Wrong example. Pero generally, generally, when I angel, angel, may kailangan padala somewhere. Sino pwede ko padala? Tatanong mo, ano ba yun? Saan? You have so many questions to ask first, di ba? Pero, the point here is this. For Isaiah, it didn't matter anymore what God told him to do. Kasi, he experienced the holiness of God. He experienced His grace at the same time. So Lord, whatever you ask me to do, there's nothing that you will ask me to do that, that is too big for me. Kasi whatever you say, you call me to do, I'm gonna do it. And itong pinagawa ni God kay Isaiah, mahirap to ah. Mahirap yung pinagawa ni God kay Isaiah. He called him to preach to a stubborn, rebellious people. Nakitang-kita natin, di ba? Mahirap yun. Pero sa Isaiah, hindi na niya, hindi na, hindi na siya nag-reklam mo. Hindi niya na in-ask, Lord, ano ba yung job requirement? Lord, kahit anong pagawa mo sa akin, gagawin ko yun. Kasi that's my experience with you. There's nothing that you ask of me that's too big that I wouldn't say yes to. And shouldn't this be the response of all Christians in light of what God did for us? What I see experience here should be what we all experience, right? Dapat naman talaga. Our response to God, God saving us, should be this. He's either Lord of all or not at all. Ideally, right? Ang dami natin matututunan dito sa, Isaiah, sa experience sa Isaiah. We saw how his encounter with God transformed him. Imagine how much of God's mercy and grace we've all experienced. Pero minsan, kung makapag-relate pa tayo kay God, parang it's, it's God who still owes us something, di ba? Parang siya pa, yung, siya pa yung may utang na loob sa atin. Right? Lalo na pag may pinapagwa sa atin si Lord. How many of you believe we have a relationship with God tapos may mga pinapagwa sa atin si Lord? Amen? Right? God has called us something. Pero minsan, kung makapag-respond pa tayo kay God, ang dami pa nating reklamo, di ba? Di ba? Or minsan, may pride pa. Lord, buta na obedient ako. Ginawa ko to for you. No. We should respond the way that Isaiah responded. Grabe yung experience of His holiness. He saw His depravity, sinful nature. Yet He experienced grace. It led Him to a life of just trusting in Him and doing whatever He has called Him to do in submission and humility. I think we can learn a lot from, what, from how Isaiah responded to God here. And she said, Lord, it doesn't matter anymore what you're going to ask me or what you're going to ask me to uh, you're going to ask me to do. I'm going I'm giving my whole life for you. And hopefully we should we can we, we learn something from Isaiah's response here. When we experience the holiness and the grace of God at the same time, our response should be one of full submission and full trust. Full submission and full trust. Because our God is a trustworthy God. Ito ah, I know in this series, if you've been tracking with us in this series, we've been looking at this, diba? We've been looking at God being trustworthy because he's, He keeps His covenant promise to us. Tama ba? Right? Grab it, trustworthy si God. He will make sure that He will make, um, that all of His promises will come to pass, diba? But ito, if that's all that there is to it, parang masyado naman niya tayo tayo nakafocus sa sarili natin, diba? Yeah, Lord, I can trust you kasi promise keeping ka. So, Lord, dapat, ano, expect ko yung mga promise mo sa, sa word mo mangyayari, right? But that's not all. Hindi lang dapat yan yung makuha natin dito in this series. It's this how I say responded to, to whole trust and obedience to God himself. Lord, because you're trustworthy, I'm going to give my whole life for you. That should be our response. That doesn't matter what you've called me to do. For me, it's a done deal. Just say the word. I know that I can trust all your plans for me. Diba? Galing ni God, no? Can we God, give God praise for that? So I hope in this series, hindi lang to yung para, grabe, um, trustworthy promises ni God. So yes, dami ko mga promise ni God. No, 
It's, a, it's how we respond to the God who gives us all of these promises. A whole, whole life surrender, whole life submission, whole life trust to Him. Amen? Amen. But wait, okay? We're not yet done. Okay. Medyo, ano, may mga tatalakayan pa tayong verses dito. We're not yet done yet. Um, going back to our theme of covenant, what God did to Isaiah here, how God set him apart and called him to his mission, not only tells us about God's grace, pero it also tells us God's faithfulness to his covenant. The covenant theme tayo in this series. We can learn something about that as well in Isaiah's encounter. God calling Isaiah to his mission also shows us how God is faithful to his covenant. Another thing we can learn is this, that God uses flawed and imperfect people like you and me to fulfill his plans. God uses flawed and imperfect people like you and me to fulfill his plans, to make sure that his covenant promises will come to pass. When I was thinking about this, about this truth of, of God and how he relates with us, with his covenant, still u- choosing to use us to fulfill his plans, I realized this truth about God. Grabe lang naisip ko, yung grace niya, he still chooses to use us and co-labor with us for his purposes. Because if you think about it, God could have fulfilled all of his plans by himself, tama ba? His sovereignty, his power, and his will. Siya naman si God, nothing is impossible with him. Yet, yet ad- amidst all of our failure, all of us breaking the covenant, all of us being sinful and broken, God still chooses to use us, flawed, sinful human beings like you, me, and Isaiah, to make sure that his covenant comes to pass. I'm not 100% sure for his reason bakit ginagamit pa rin niya tayo to advance his kingdom purposes. But I think one of the reasons is because he's a relational God. And he has a relationship with us, his chosen people. And I believe he wants to journey with us in his mission. As we follow God's will, as we follow God's call, to fulfill his covenant plans. He, he uses sinful people like you and me to advance his purposes. I believe, ano eh, madaming teaching moments yan eh. We grow in the process. We mature in the process of co-laboring with God. Because God could have done all of these things on his own. Pero I believe he wants to invite us on a journey. He wants to journey with us in this life. Folks, how many of you know we have a purpose in God? Do you, be, do you believe we have a purpose in God? Do you, do you believe we have a calling in God? Amen. And part of God unfolding His covenant and His plans in this world is calling us to participate in the unfolding of those plans. And yes, gagamitin niya tayo, flawed, sinful human beings like you and me, to advance His kingdom purposes. You're, if you're watching this video, video, this message, hindi to pre-recorded, if you're watching this message and you're thinking, talaga ako ba? Part ba ako dyan? Di ba? Pang mga full-time lang yan. Eh. Pang mga likes of sila EJ, yan, sila Lyovic, sila lang dapat Yung dyan, ako okay na ako dito. Hindi, lahat tayo. You've been set apart by God. He has a purpose for you. He has a plan for you. He has a mission for you. And He will use all of us to advance and co-labor in His kingdom together. Question is this. I want you to think about this. Kasi yung preaching natin, yes, Isaiah was transformed, pero he was also called to a mission. For all of us, this is what we should think about and ponder. Where, where is God leading you in this life? Where has He called you? Kasi lahat tayo may specific calling from God. Even in the midst of everything that the world is going through, feeling natin, wala na namang future tong world na to. Hindi, madami pa. Right? Madami pang mangyayari. Madami pang unfold si God in this, in this lifetime. Right? Wherever God is leading you, I pray that you will trust in Him. And just like Isaiah, if God calls us there, ano yung mangyayari sa atin? Hear my Lord, send me. Send me. Hindi lang yan pang, ano, pang full-time. Eh? <laughs> yung verse na usually parang pang full-time lang, mga nag-missions, di, here and there and there. That's for wherever God is calling you. Ano ba yung purpose niya sa life mo? Follow His plan without question. Submit totally to His will. Just like Isaiah. We have a mission from God and He will use us Christians to preach the gospel, make disciples in every nation. Amen? Amen. Okay? Now going back to Isaiah, and as we look at the remaining verses in Isaiah chapter 6, malapit na pa tayo mag-close, don't worry. Sabi sa inyo, ano eh, usually isang preaching lang yung Isaiah verse 1 to verse 8 eh, pero hanggang 9 to 13 tayo. Pero don't worry, okay? Kapit lang po, okay? So, so God called His 
God called Isaiah to preach to his people, right? Ito yung naging mission niya from God. Diba? Whom shall I send who will go for us? Ano yung mission ni, ano yung mission ni ano, Isaiah from God? To preach to, to his people against a rebellious, stubborn, uh, and people who are, have so much social injustice, idolatry. We saw that from week one to week three, right? That was Isaiah's call, Isaiah's mission. Now, in verse 9 to 13, just like what we said earlier, makikita naman natin how did the people as respond to Isaiah's call? How did the people respond to Isaiah preaching God's word to them? So, kita natin dito um, how the people will respond and what will transpire in the future. Let me read verse 9 to 13 for you, okay? And generally, sabi nga nila, the reason why preachers usually end in verse 8, kasi <laughs> itong verse 9 to 13, it's a very bleak picture. Eh, hindi masyado maganda yung mga verses na to. That's why most now end in verse 8. Okay, na, that's verse 8. Encouraging na yan. Tama ba? Woo! Let's respond to God's mission. Pero we have to f- preach the whole context of God's word. Ano yung sinabi dito sa verse 9 to 13? And why do many people stop at verse 8? Let's see. Check natin. Verse 9. Sabi dito, And he said, Go and say to these people, Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the people, the heart of these people dull and their ears heavy and, their, and blind their eyes. I encourage you dito. Lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. Ano pa? Verse 11. Say, si Isaiah, ano? Dahil nade-discourage na. Sabi niya. Then I said, how long, O oh Lord, oh Lord how, how long will it be like this? And ano, lalo pa siyang discourage sabi dito. And he said, until cities lie waste without inhabitant and houses without people and the land is a desolate waste. And the Lord removes people far away and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. Verse 13, and though a tenth remain in it, it will be burned again like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains when it is felled. The Holy Seed is its stump. Sino sa inyo pag yung binasa niyo yung nagbago yung buhay niyo? <laughs> Sino sa inyo na encourage ng binasa niyo verse 9 to 13, right? It's a sad it's a sad and bleak picture of the future for God's people. The ba yung theme natin what we've been studying in Isaiah is the people of God broke the covenant, chose to rebel against him. And God called Isaiah to preach to them, right? Preach about his word. But the future, how the people will respond, it's grim, it's pretty bleak, and it's just outright depressing. Basically, this, this tells us that God's people will reject God's message. Those rebellious, stubborn, idolatrous people, still, no, kahit ilang beses na pinadala ni God ng prophet, Sarah, they still choose to reject God's message. Ito yung summary nun eh. They will hear, but they won't understand. They will see, but they won't perceive. Ang sasabi nito, utter judgment and destruction are the destiny of the people because they have not refused to repent and listen to the prophets. Thus, the curses and the consequences of the covenant will finally fall upon them. Utter and total destruction. Sad, no? Diba? Naiintindihan niyo ba bakit nag-end yung mga preachers sa verse 8? Hindi na tinutuloy sa verse 9 to 13. But again, we preach from every word that comes from the mouth of God. And I think it's good for us to be aware of this truth. Here's the reality for us, and I believe you can relate with Isaiah. So si Isaiah, the back in all God for our mission to preach to his people. Tapos ito yung maging resulta. Lord, bakit mo ka preach kung ganyan lang rin naman yung mga maging result? I think similarly, like us, when God calls us to His mission, our preaching of the Word of God, our preaching of His message, the truth is, ito yung matututunan natin from the text. People will not always, the Word will not always be received by people. The truth is, some people will reject the message of God. Yung results kasi kay God na yun. Naniniwala ba kayo yung results kay God doon? Basta yung calling natin, I hope is this, that we will respond to what God has called us to do. Yung results, it, let's leave that all up to God. Kasi we cannot, we cannot really totally predict the future. And we, can, we don't have control over the lives of people. It's up, we, our job is to preach the word. 
make disciples. But how people will respond, it's up to them. And it's up to the sovereignty of God. I hope that even if in the future, when we, when, we, when we answer God's call to advance His kingdom and His mission, right? We don't get discouraged because that's the response of people. I hope that we will still continue to preach, continue, continue to faithfully preach the word. Because si Isaiah naman, ganon yung nagi response ng people sa kanya. And si Isaiah na yun, eh? so it's not about us, ladies and gentlemen. It's not about our skills. It's not about how gifted we are in speaking. Pero our job is just to be faithful to God's call for each and every one of us, to be obedient to God, to do whatever He's called us to do. In result, let's leave that up to God. So I think Isaiah's ministry is a good reminder. We can trust that God's plan will happen and He is faithful to all of His promises, 100% sure. But yung how those promises will and plans will unfold, that's entirely up to Him. You know, God's ministry is not all about blessings, blessings, blessings. Diba? Kasama dyan sa ministry ni God yung being rejected by people. Kasama dyan yung mga difficulties and hardships in life. That's really just part of that. But even though we experience trials and hardships, we can always be 100% sure that God's plan and purposes will prevail. He knows what He's doing, and we can be sure that whatever He has planned, whatever His goals are, they will all come to pass. And we know this to be true. Because at the last part of this sad, bleak, prophetic message, you know, yung nagbabasa ko ng, ano, commentary sources on this. Yun yung sasabi generally about verse 9 to 13. It's bleak, it's sad, hopeless for all people. But I don't think that's entirely true. Yes, in all of, almost all of verse 9 to 13, ganun yung picture. Pero the last part of Isaiah 6, I think, I think can still give us at the last part of this bleak and prophetic message from verse 9 to 13, I think it's still a message of hope. And this is what it communicates to us, that hope will always be the final word. Hope will always be the final word, final word kahit ganyan yung nakita natin picture. Maybe many people just miss this, but God still gives a message of hope to His people. Verse 13. Basahin natin yun, ba? And though a tenth remain in it, it will be burned again like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains when it is felled. Ano ending nito? Ano ending nito? The last line here, verse 13, the holy seed is its stump. This last part, as I've read it, commentaries, can refer either to the remnant, there's gonna be a remnant of God's people, yung mga matitira, who will survive the judgment who will survive the exile and continue the lineage of Abraham and thus, matutuloy pa rin yung covenant promises ni God through them. Or another, another commentary would say that the holy seed is its stump could refer to the Messiah, the shoot that will come from the stump. In either case, whether this talks about the remnant of God's people or the Messiah, one thing is for sure, judgment will not be the final word. God, even in the midst of destruction and judgment, and amidst all the chaos, will forever remain faithful to His covenant. No matter what happens, the hope of God will always be the final word. And we will learn more about this hope in these last two weeks of this series. For now, let's just close in prayer. Father, thank you, God, for your word. And thank you, God, for the lessons we've learned today, from the lessons we've learned from the life of Isaiah, Thank you, God, because um, uh, I pray, Lord, that your experience in Isaiah will be our experience. Most of the time, kasi, Lord, ano eh, we take the good news for granted. Na, ah, yung gospel, yay, thank you, Jesus, for dying for my sins on the cross. I can go to heaven. But most of the time, what we don't get is a revelation, Lord God, of how sinful, how flawed we are. Because we haven't have yet had yet a revelation of your holiness. Father, I pray that you will give us a deeper understanding and revelation of how holy, holy, holy you are so that we will see ourselves for who we really are, Lord God. Just like Isaiah, parang, grabe, this is, this, this is supposed to be our destiny. This is supposed to be what's gonna happen for us. But thank you, God, because of the gospel, just like Isaiah, our sin is taken away. Our guilt is atoned for. And I pray, Lord God, 
because we will have a better understanding of your gospel for us. Yung response namin will be uh, that we will be a people who will trust you fully and will submit to you fully. Thank you, God, because you are a trustworthy God. And wherever, wherever you've called us, Lord God, one thing is for sure, alam namin, Lord God, all of us Christians are called to preach your word, to make disciples. Whatever the result will be, we'll leave that up to you. But I pray that we will be faithful, Lord God. We will always be faithful to your word, to your calling for us. Maraming salamat, Lord God, for our time together. And I pray, God, for every one of us, wherever you've called us, give us the grace and strength to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen, Amen.